Hello and welcome to Living Life. We've been following the story of Nicodemus and his first interaction with Jesus. And it's going to be in this passage where we start to see that next level of the conversation. Uh, Nicodemus has asked a question, now Jesus is now answering. But in this, Jesus is going to take him to school. He's going to show him how important it is for Jesus to suffer and what that means and what the cross ultimately exemplifies. That the cross shows us so much more about who God is. If you've ever wondered the question, why is it that if we reject the cross, that, we're, that we're, we are rejecting Jesus? Have you ever thought about that? Couldn't it be that if we, can't we just reject the cross but yet accept Jesus? You'll see in this passage why that's not a possibility because in the cross we see something so special. John chapter 3 verses 9 through 21. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and do you not understand these things? I tell you the truth, we speak of what we know, and we testify to what we have seen, but still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. Whoever believes in Him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men loved darkness instead of light, because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what he has done has been done through God. Now as we have been following the story of Nicodemus and Jesus, everything has made sense I think, right? Jesus uh, asks him um, all these questions and, you know, and Nicodemus doesn't know how to answer them, right? You have to be born again. How, what do you mean I have to be born again? And so you, we start to see uh, where Nicodemus is coming from. And then Jesus starts to talk about this in verses uh, 13, 14, 15, right? In 14 and 15 it says, Just as Moses was lifted up, uh, lifted, up the, lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. It's, he talks about being born again, and, 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 and you know, Nicodemus is trying to understand what does it mean to be born again, and then Jesus responds with these verses. It doesn't seem to add up. Why does Jesus talk about Moses lifting up a snake in the wilderness? Well, if you know the story, the people of Israel had sinned. And so, so Moses has to lift up, lift up a snake. And as he, as, as, as he lifts up a snake, uh, everyone who chooses to fix their eyes on the snake was saved. And if you remember that story, you may be wondering, why was it a snake? Why was it a snake that was lifted up? And what was the point of that, that people are saved? And it's the same question with the cross. Why is it when Jesus will be lifted up, right? He'll be lifted up that everyone who sees him and believes in him will have eternal life. This is all uh, an answer to that original question, how can I be born again? The way in which you and I can be born again, the way in which we have been born again, it's when we saw the cross. Jesus crucified there 
for our sins. Why is it that if we reject the cross, we reject Jesus? Because it's in the cross we see the very heart of Jesus. It's in the cross what we see is one of the love of God, right? God sent his son, right? Jesus, because he loves us, uh, endures the son, and endures the cross, right? And he suffers. You see love manifesting in suffering. But it's also in this that Jesus is the most exalted. As Jesus loves, and because he loves, he chooses to suffer. And because he suffers, we see a picture of him. We see what love is, and therefore Jesus is exalted. The reason in which if we reject the cross, the reason if we reject the cross that we also reject in Jesus, it's because that's who he is. If you reject the cross, if you reject all of what Jesus did, in essence, you're rejecting Jesus. Everything of who he is and why he came to this earth. It's also in that we see his heart. He's a man who loves. He's a man who loves to the point of suffering for your sins and my sins. And it's in that, that's why God exalts him in the highest place, because of that. After he talks about uh, being lifted up in the wilderness, it's the passage that is the most famous in the world. John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son. Whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. It's all correlated, don't you see? The cross is mentioned first, and then it talks about because of the cross, that's the reason which why Jesus has to come. And so therefore, John 3.16, whoever believes in him will have eternal life. And in the verses following, it talks about God did not send the Son right, to condemn, but to save. Right? And so therefore, believe. Believe in him. And it's this word believe is mentioned several times in these verses. And this idea of believing is not simply you believe once and you're saved. But the idea of it is you continue to believe. It's, a, it's this idea that whoever believes and continues to believe in him will have eternal life. And therefore, in the following verses, those who do not believe right, uh, and, and continues to not to believe. It's, it's these verses that reveal to us the importance of present day faith. You may have believed in Jesus when you first got saved uh, back in the junior high or high school retreat. And you may think, well, once saved, always saved. But this idea of belief is you believe then and you believe now. You believe in Jesus and your need for saving in whichever circumstance that you were in in junior high or in high school. But also you believe in Jesus today. Whichever circumstances that you are in today, whichever sins that you struggle with today, you still choose to believe in Him. The idea of this word belief is you choose to believe whichever situation that you are in and whichever time that you are in because the ultimate belief that, 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 that is important here is this idea of you continue to believe in Him regardless of of circumstance. Let's confess our need for the cross today. And the way in which we do that is we confess our sins and we acknowledge uh, what the cross has done for us. It's forgiven us and gives us access to God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you that you loved us so much that you sent your Son. Jesus, we thank you that you chose to suffer and die in our place for our sins so that we would have eternal life with you. And so God, we recognize the very reason in which we can even speak to you now, it's because of the cross. The cross has saved us for all of our life. And God, we choose to believe in you and, your, and the continuing, con continuing work of salvation within our hearts 
and within our lives. God, we need you so much. And we, God, we confess our need for you. We trust you. We believe in you. We love you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.